Hello and good morning. Uh, this is my uh, first presentation on Zoom. I usually use a program called uh, Webinar Jam, but Webinar Jam does not let people uh, participate. And I hope that there will be a way for everybody to uh, participate. So I decided to use this program. Um, so first of all, uh, First of all, I'm going to uh, talk about uh, a topic that uh, drives a lot of people crazy in the movie business, which is uh, movie marketing, with some great tips about movie financing. Uh, some of my tips, or a lot of them are out of the box type of uh, tips. And uh, there will be more seminars with more, more advanced on, um, how to uh, market your films. So I'm gonna start with the slideshow. So we are a company called Flix U Limited. We distribute over 35 films to over 50 countries. We've been around for uh, um, 13 years. I myself and I'm in the music business my whole life. And we also invent new technological ideas for distribution. Well, we have many websites, so I'm not gonna go into them right now because this is sort of promotion, uh, but uh, anybody who wants a copy of our slides or to know about our other sites or what we do, I'm happy to send you. Uh, here we have in the first, uh, line we have our main site the second line is a horror film site that we have with lots of films we are launching in england um, a tv channel with only horror films by the way based on the films on this site uh, this is a site uh, that you can make your own um, site and which i will explain later and this is uh, a blockchain type of a site which i will explain later I'm not trying to sell you anything here. Um, of course, I will make a little plug for our products, but I'm not trying to uh, sell you anything. Uh, so what is the basic problem? The basic problem is that movie makers and producers, they make their film, but after they make their film, they don't care much about what's happening they they just, they just give the film to uh, a company like Amazon or they maybe they uh, do other places to distribute like iTunes, but that's the end of it. They they figure that their film is going to be so great that they're going to make millions. Uh, people will just jump and look for the films. But sadly, that's not what happens. Uh, you are a tiny little fish in a big pond. And nobody really uh, knows about your film uh, unless you get lots of uh, PR and write-ups. So nobody's going to even look for your film. So you need to do your own marketing unless you hire a marketing company, of course. Uh, and you have to take care of your films. If, if you don't take care of marketing, nothing will happen. Now... The, the, the things I'm going to list here are usually things that don't happen with films uh, up to a few million dollars of production. After a few million dollars of production, then there might be a staff that will take care of a lot of these problems. Uh, and of course, the more money the film costs, the more there is a staff and there is more people that are interested in marketing the film because there's more money on the line. And there might be a major investor who already knows about the movie business and he's going to insist on the distribution. So, uh, first of all, uh, a lot of producers don't care about the music that comes with the film. Or this is a real secondary issue. They don't really care. 
about the film. And they don't even have a great music track or music tracks. They don't try to sell the music by itself on different music sites or make do a lot of PR about music. And it's a huge mistake because um, if for any freaky reason you have great music, you might have, um, you know, uh, 50 million people streaming it on, on, on Spotify and that will give you uh, traction. Um, I will just tell you a little story. A friend of mine is a producer. He came from Germany. He didn't know good English. Uh, and he met some character here in LA who was running around with blue hair. And together they put together a couple of songs and um, the German guy did not even know English very well. And he then decided to upload it on um, Tic Tac. And he came up with some kind of a special sound that he uh, made the dance track out of it for 15 seconds. And lo and behold, 5 million people plus decided to do a dance of this 15 seconds with their version. As a result, it got over 300 million rotations on Spotify and on YouTube and on iTunes. And as a result, that kid with the blue hair got a contract of $17 million with two and a half million dollars cash up front. So that just goes you to power of music. Now imagine if you had a track that didn't even, not that much, but lots of it, it's free advertising. So music is very, very critical. And this I'm saying because of course I'm a music man, but also because it's really critical. And a lot of producers don't care much for it or don't want to spend any money. You should get a good composer. A lot of them will work for free by the way, because they just want to get the credits. <clears throat> and uh, if possible, try to make it contemporary music, maybe hip hop soundtrack, uh, some parts of it, because if you're gonna have uh, classical music type or uh, uh, stuff like that, it may not be that popular. <clears throat> now, another thing is, which is overlooked by uh, huge amounts of uh, people is uh, the trailer. The trailer is a very critical uh, uh, issue because uh, many people that you're gonna be dealing with will wanna see the trailer first. For some reason, again, a lot of people in the uh, movie business, especially with a lower uh, budget film, they don't really spend much time on the trailer, but the trailer is critical because the trailer is your business card. And if you don't have a good trailer, you will turn off a lot of potential buyers or maybe most of them. So even if it will cost you thousands of dollars to have a specialist do your trailer, it's extremely important to have a good trailer. And I cannot emphasize how critical the trailer is. So uh, people that do professional trailers charge around $3,000. I'm talking about the good ones. It's a good, good investment for you. Don't be cheap on the trailer. You should prepare a press kit, electronic press kit also, uh, a um, physical one, you can do it yourself. And as I explained later on, there's a site called fiverr.com where you can find all kinds of people that will do all that kind of work for you for pennies. When I say pennies, I mean, sometimes as little as $50. Um, okay. Then um, you should also make sure that you have good information on, uh, I'm trying to, uh, quiet my uh, telephone here, it's just, who knows. You should also have, uh, you should also have good information on IMDb and other informational sites about the movie. A lot of people just put a couple lines and that's the end of it. Uh, when you do IMDb Pro, you can put yourself all kinds of things and you can easily put good information about the film and all about it and fill in the blanks properly. And don't hesitate to make sure that each one of the main stars of the film, if they're not that famous yet, have their own page on IMDb. This again, you can do with IMDb Pro. Uh, and of course you should have pictures and, and promo of your film. I know it doesn't sound that important, but a lot of people before they watch a film will go to IMDb. And if you don't have good information, then they're not gonna watch it. Now, another thing is that a lot of people, they start promoting their film after the film is, is finished. They, they don't um, 
um, they, do, they don't uh, start the promotion from the beginning of the film. When you even think about the film, you should think already about videos and press releases. When I said the word press releases, it's no big thing to do press release. Again, you can hire people from uh, Fiverr.com that for $150 to $150 would post all kinds of press releases for you, uh, which is kind of old fashioned, but still works because people still read the papers. And of course, needless to say, use the social sites. Uh, and when I say videos, it doesn't have to be anything dramatic. It could be even small videos, even 60 second videos of you preparing films or you having sessions about the films, all kinds of films and should be released to the social sites and some of them, if you have the budget, uh, to uh, PR site, to the PR um, sites that will publicize it everywhere. Basically, you have to build anticipation. You have to be in a situation where the people that uh, may watch your film, they will be waiting for the film. They'll be counting the days until the film is going to show up. They just, hopefully they saw a trailer in one of the sites that I will mention later. And now they're all waiting to see the film, uh, you know, and they're very, very interested. At the same time, might be other people that might be crucial for what you're doing that will have this anticipation. Um, and the last thing is you're on your own. Don't expect anybody to do anything for you. Nobody cares. Remember, this is Hollywood. Uh, Nobody cares, only you can care for about your film. And as long as you understand this very critical point, you, you are in business because nobody cares. Maybe your family cares, maybe your other half cares, but nobody cares. You have to take care of your own, okay? And this is just a little summary of some of the things you need to do about the film, which you may know a lot of them or most of these things. First, you have to go social. Uh, which means all the different social sites, we'll explain later. You need to advertise the film in the cheapest way you can. You will need to do SEO. And again, you can find people on fiverr.com that can do SEO for you, very cheap. So when they type the subject matter of the film or even the name of the, well, the film you don't have to do SEO, but you can do SEO about the topic of the film or to appeal the, uh, to the crowd that might watch your film. So if they're going to, type the words uh, horror film site or something, it, or horror film, it will come up with the name of your film. So SEO could be very important. It doesn't cost much money. And if you email me later, I can send you also the name of specialists that do this, do this not that expensive, and not necessarily from Fiverr. Uh, you should also have a, a mailing list. Uh, we also have a 40,000 mailing list that we, uh, have all kinds of distributors and people in the movie business so we can advertise with one click of a button. Things to people. So try to get yourself a, a mailing list of distributors that might be relevant uh, to, uh, uh, to your film. Uh, uh, for example, if you do a documentary film, uh, there is a site that will have, uh, again, I can send that to you by return, uh, that will have the name of the two, 275 prominent documentary film uh, distributors. So you can appeal to all of them. Of course, don't bombard them with film, but you can just send them a lot of introduction, et cetera. Uh, as time goes by, also update your mailing list with new companies and be very meticulous about it because it may not look important to you, but each one of the people that, that you have their email or phone number for text messaging uh, is important. You never know. You never know, you'll find out uh, as you go down maybe five or 10 years, that, um, that people are, are there, okay? And um, then, of course, if you, you may want to run webinars, just like this webinar, you may want to run a webinar and you want to introduce your film to film distributors. And by the way, that's kind of a revolutionary idea. So you can have a webinar and you can show in the webinar, you know, a trailer of your film. Uh, the people in the webinar don't have to know each other, necessarily. Uh, so you can simply uh, discuss your film. That could be a very good way to market your film. Okay. Now, another thing is, which is extremely critical for the success of your film, and I cannot emphasize it enough, 
is clear your rights. Make sure that it's very clear that who owns the movie. Because um, make make sure that uh, um, um, that the people that you do for hire people they have the proper contracts with you. Because at some point in time, <clears throat> some of them may come up and it could be down the line and claim that the film is, uh, they own the film. Let's suppose you a, a, a um, film producer uh, to, um, to do the film. You gave him, for example, $20,000 to do the film. He may drop dead one, I'm sorry, he may die one day and his children will come and say that the film belongs to them either because they know or they don't know. And that could be very problematic. I, we were on YouTube years ago, we're no longer on YouTube, doing, uh, putting complete films, and we got complaints. And the complaints, 99% uh, of them were false, but, and they were amazing. For example, some guy said that uh, uh, somebody talking in a certain movie sounds like the voice of his father, therefore he owns the movie, okay? Uh, another guy said that, um, or oh, actually many people said that uh, the father, the father, uh, he was the producer, therefore they owned the film. He was not the producer, he was the producer, but he got paid for it. And you can find that out by looking on the credits or investigating the film. So it's very critical, which may or may not sound that important right now, that you clear the rights. That, so if anybody gives you a hard time, uh, you can, with one click of a mouse, send a document that shows it to you on the film. And I cannot emphasize enough how much trouble you will have if you don't have uh, the rights well recorded and cl crystal clear the film belongs to you. I cannot emphasize. You'll find that uh, bad people will even uh, go to websites where you have your film and will have the, the sites take off the film because a lot of websites don't want to get involved with rights disputes, so they'll just take off your film and you'll lose. So this is very critical. One of the most critical things is make sure that with one click of a mouse, somebody, uh, you shut off anybody that gives you a, a hard time. Now, I'm just going to discuss some of the places where you can put your films. And I'm not anti any of them. I'm just telling you, uh, the, the pros and cons, or may, mainly the cons of doing things with them. Of course, you can still do business with them, but you have to be aware of the dangers. So Vimeo advertises like crazy that you can uh, have your film uh, with a payment mechanism on their site. It's very nice. But first of all, remember that you are still a, you, you're a small fish in a big pond. So when you put your film, remember your film is, it has to be precious. If it's available everywhere and, and a good distributor finds out, he will not do business with you. So you have to be very careful where you have your film. If you're just going to splash the film everywhere, uh, you may lose out. Okay. So, so be very careful uh, about, uh, I'm just going to take a look at the chats for a second. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for the comment about higher and not higher. Okay, I'm sorry, uh, the stuff on this presentation I prepared in the last minute. So I, I apologize for spelling mistakes. Uh, I was born in New York City, by the way, just in case you wonder where this strange accent I have, but I lived in many other countries and I speak 10 languages, so I have a bizarre accent. I was born in Manhattan. Anyways, so if you are uh, on Vimeo, you're a small fish in a big pond, one, one film out of thousands they can um, cancel you very easily. This is the biggest problem when you deal with sites like Vimeo, they can just cancel you and there's nothing you can do about it. A guy comes by and says it's his film, whatever. You don't have your papers in order. They don't want to hear you, whatever. Sometimes they don't want to hear you. Even YouTube takes sides based on whatever they feel like it. And that's a very, very big problem because you imagine you have your film on the site. Maybe it's very successful. Maybe you have a lot of people buying the film to watch it. And then bingo, they just take off your film. Maybe you, uh, this is how you make bread every month and you're happy to get an income every month. And suddenly uh, you got nothing. They just take it off and there's nothing you can do. You can't find Vimeo, it's a big company. Uh, then 
in general, you're not going to have big revenues from Vimeo because uh, unless you advertise the film like crazy, uh, I don't think you will have big revenues from films on Vimeo. It's not your site. Another big danger you have with Vimeo is that the payment mechanism is with a company called Stripe. And um, Stripe is a good, good company. It's a payment company, but there can be extraordinarily tough. They can just decide that your film is not legal for whatever they feel like. In their bylaws, they have their own bylaws like every company, which are pretty satanic. Um, uh, it says that they can cancel you because they think that your film is, uh, I don't know, uh, stolen. And you can argue all day long. They don't care. Some kid sits there in their offices and he decides that uh, he, he decides that um, the film is not legal and just takes you off. And you cannot even appeal. Technically, you can appeal, but the appeal is BS. So in addition to Vimeo, you have an issue that could happen with this company called Stripe. Um, then you have Amazon, which most film producers think is the holy grail, as that's where they're going to make uh, their millions. I'm not sure about it, because in Amazon, they have uh, lots of films. Uh, another thing that may not be in your favor is that Amazon and all the big, uh, which is against you, uh, Amazon and all the big uh, film companies, they have united sort of officially or not officially, and they all so show each other's films. So technically, Amazon has uh, over 100 or 200,000 films like advertised. It's not really their films. A lot of them don't belong to them. If they add HBO and other ones. So again, you're a very big, very small fish in a big pond. You're just a nothing, okay? And I'm very, being very blunt. I'm talking to you like a businessman that deals with it. And you're just a nobody. And the chances of you shining are going to depend on maybe a PR and marketing of the film and everybody wants to see the film on Amazon. They don't pay that much commission anyways, but there's nothing wrong being on Amazon. But if you want to count uh, so many film producers I meet, I ask them where you uh, distrib distributed. It says iTunes and Amazon. To them, that's the end of it. They're, they're done. They're going to make millions. They don't care. That's ridiculous. Amazon should be just a fraction of what you're going to be doing marketing your film just one avenue in many okay and if 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 um you, you have to remember something a lot of film producers they make the film they they might make a beautiful film and they may think that their film is the best film in the world and it's all very true maybe it's a great film but remember most films have behind them uh, uh, investors if you are going to be doing some money for the investors they will invest in your next film if you're going to fail them, uh, they're not going to be dealing with you anymore. And you're going to have to start all over again looking for money if you do another film. And I'll, I'll give you a quick example, which is not in the slides. Um, a friend of mine, his name was Mo. And his whole life, he said that he, he'll do a film, OK, from the time we knew each other since we were teenagers. And indeed, when he was at an advanced age, he did a film. He, he did get it together. And he did the film. And uh, I really admired that, that his whole life he said he'll do a film, and he did do a film eventually. Um, and uh, even managed to get a main star to the film because that main star was walking down the street when he filmed the film. And uh, my friend Mo asked him to come by and say hello or something. So that main star appears on the film. And when my friend advertised the film, he even put the name of the main star, uh, which is not exactly legal, but whatever. So uh, my friend made a deal with a local distribution company, which I don't know if they exist anymore. And they told him, uh, you know, we're paying you $100,000 advance, but we're only going to give you $20,000, but we can count it as if we gave you $100,000 because, uh, uh, because um, uh, that's how it works, which means they exhibit in shows all over the United States. They travel, they go to hotels, uh, who knows what they do. That's, that counts as expenses. So basically, the deductible is $100,000, like insurance. So the first $100,000 uh, before anything goes to the distribution company, but they only gave him $20,000. This is a famous trick that's done every day of the week. And most people fall for it because they're so happy to get some money. Uh, needless to say, the contract is usually 65 pages or 70 pages. So who has any patience to read it? 
and the lawyer may charge you a fortune to read this contract. They charge money for read. So anyway, so my friend got twenty thousand dollars. Then he found an international distributor who also gave him twenty thousand dollars for the worldwide rights. And again, it's a hundred thousand uh, dollars up front technically, but in reality, he only got twenty thousand dollars. So he got forty thousand dollars. Invested two hundred fifty thousand uh, dollars from investors' money and also three years of his life, planning the movie, doing the movie, marketing the movie, whatever. So at least three years of his life, of his life he spent on this uh, film, plus he basically lost $210,000 and plus whatever your time is worth. He was very happy. As far as he was concerned, he did well, but obviously he didn't do well because the inv no investors on that film would invest with him again, because he has no excuse. He didn't do any marketing whatsoever. Uh, needless to say, the, those distribution companies never bothered to even send them uh, royalty statements. So, and he was locked up for seven years. He couldn't do anything for seven years because these were exclusive deals. So this is something that you have to think about, which is probably your biggest problem. Now, uh, one thing you should do is you should get a website going and don't just do uh, a one pager. Um, a one-pager uh, website. Uh, we offer a ready-made website, by the way, for you. But you should ha have a serious website. Doesn't cost much money again. You can go to a company like Wix uh, and other companies and do a very nice site. Spend some time on it. Don't just have a one-pager and whatever. Because remember, if you don't want to spend time on your film, who's going to spend time on it? Nobody. And you're going to lose. So take your time. It's worthwhile to do and do a free site or you want to pay for the site on Wix or other of the free sites, maybe Weebly, whatever. And in there, you should have uh, all about the movie stars in the film, uh, a trailer. Maybe you should even have a payment mechanism where they can see the film and pay for it, which we can help you with that. And make it a complete thing. And it's going to be very, very good for you if you have your own website and you can uh, tell people uh, this is the website. Um, needless to say, you should have business cards ready with the names, the name of the website or your, and your Facebook. So many people you meet that uh, don't have any business cards and they say, go look for me on LinkedIn or go look for me on Facebook. That's ridiculous. It's not a dating story here that you tell people find me on Facebook. This is business. This is your life. You need to have clear information about your yourself on a business card. And don't be cheap. Don't do a $10 web, uh, business card. You can do really nice business cards for $100. And I'm not here a big spender, but it makes all the difference in the world. If you have a nice business card, people take their business card, they touch it, they see it's made out of plastic or some other material, and they see you mean business. You took care of yourself. You have a nice uh, business card. Uh, this is very, very important. These are small things that are very, very important that you should have a good business card. Another thing, try to have a, a small brochure, maybe the size of a postcard that explains all about the movie. Um, and you should have it in your bag or wherever next to you and just give it to everybody. All these little things make all the difference. Believe me, so many people contact me years later and they say, oh, I just found your business card, blah, blah, blah. So it's very, very important. Uh, this is a very short blurb about uh, our system, which we call Movie Business in the Box, which is a, a website that we give you that's ready to go with over 3,500 um, 3,500 films and you can put your films in front of it. And you may say, why do I need all this? It can have a website with just my films, but our site also has thousands of films. So people might be much more inclined to go to the site, subscribe to the site and then see your films. So that's important. Um, if you just have your own site, then who's going to subscribe to a, a film site with just one, one site, with just one film? Although it's possible, of course, that he'll pay to see your film but there's a bigger chance that people will uh, want to um, uh, subscribe to the site and then see your films and eventually get paid. Now, when you want to do a marketing campaign for a film, it's not a joke. You want to, do, if you have the budget and I'm talking about it, a low cost budget, you should have a, wars, a war room 
somewhere, or it could be digital, of course, uh, you know, the people sit in their homes. You should get two or three young kids that they uh, are interns or whatever, or they're on their vacation. And most, uh, most young kids, they know how to maneuver uh, the in internet very well because they study it. And these kids could be very, very good to market your film on the, your, um, on the internet. You may not need two or three kids, you may need just one. And they may even work for free for the experiences, endless kids that will be so happy to be in the movie industry, even temporary and help you market your film, which you and you can put together a plan. Uh, you may also want to get uh, somebody who's a special, uh, I'm sorry for the spelling mistakes on this particular slide, so I'm really sorry. Uh, you may also want to have um, a media advertising person, somebody who's going to be in charge of social media, uh, somebody's going to be charged, uh, 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 who's going to be charged in, in social media, somebody's going to send press releases, because although, although you can hire somebody from, from uh, Fiverr to do your press releases, uh, you can also do it yourself. There's uh, five or 10 sites out there. And again, I can send you the information. And I'm really sorry for the spelling mistakes. They look really terrible. Um, and um, that uh, that he ca they can uh, do these press releases. And don't underestimate that the, your, your uh, media advertising is probably the most important thing of, besides the film itself. You need to make sure that as many people as possible know about the film, they're intrigued about the film and they want to see the film. And if you do that, you can be very, very successful. And, and this is not a lot of money. If you had one, two, three kids that work for free, basically as interns, the special media, maybe you can uh, work another arrangement. And I highly recommend that this is a very critical point of your marketing campaign. Don't be cheap. If you're a producer, most probably you're busy with different things and you don't have time to do this and you're not going to do it, guaranteed. Okay, so the question is, do you want to produce films? You want to direct films? You want to do whatever with the films or do you really want to be successful? And I personally think, especially as a music man also, that the biggest enjoyment you can have from your film, if it becomes very famous and people uh, see it and they talk about it um, and... Um, that's an unbelievable type of pleasure if you, you would know about the films. I remember uh, as, a music, uh, as a music guy that if my song, uh, not my song, the song of one of my artists would be playing on the radio, uh, not once and not twice, I, and many people have done that, I would get out of the car and just start dancing in the street or something from happiness. Uh, there's some kind of, and that's what show business is all about. There's some kind of huge happiness in your product um, uh, being available uh, and everybody sees it. And maybe if you have a, the budget, one day it's gonna be on the billboard on Sunset Strip and things like that. So there's very, very big pleasure in, in, um, in advertising and getting known. And I don't know if my slides represent that, but there's a person I cannot mention his name right now. He's, uh, he's a movie star from the 80s pretty famous, I cannot mention his name again. And he did a film, I'm not gonna say what type of film right now. And he did manage to, uh, uh, to get himself into a few uh, shows on TV and even uh, went and got a big billboard on Sunset Strip. He found an investor that uh, actually spent money on advertising. He didn't do that much advertising and amazingly enough, he decided to show the film on a one-time basis, like uh, like when you show boxers or something, uh, PP something, you know, whatever it's called, a uh, pay-per-view, uh, PPV. And uh, he managed to uh, show just one time the film and charge $20. Amazingly enough, uh, 34,000 people saw the film. They, each one paid $20. So within one hour, this guy made $740,000 gross. You may say it's impossible. It is very possible. If the film is interesting to people and makes sense and is exciting and you did a lot of pre-advertising before the film and you got people anticipating the film, you can do a special VIP uh, showing for $20 a pop, especially if you built a mailing list. And again, I cannot tell you all the different ways to do things only in future seminars online. 
but of how to build your mailing list. And I can tell you that he made $740,000 in one shot. He did it again. It wasn't as successful anymore, but I think he grossed, uh, I'm not sure, over a million dollars just from doing that. That's not bad. Now, here's a slide about Tic Tac. Uh, most people don't appreciate Tic Tac that much. Uh, they think it's just some kind of a BS site. It's for little kids. It's not true at all. Tic Tac is one of the fastest growing sites in the United States. We all know about all the hopla who owns the Tic Tac and what's going to happen. And maybe Tic Tac will not survive in the States. I don't know. But let's put uh, politics aside. Uh, Tic Tac is a great place to advertise. Uh, they do have uh, advertising and they do have also 15 second dances or 15 seconds things that you can put on it. Then this to say you should, uh, if you do your marketing campaign, you should have a site for the movie and upload nonstop uh, little videos of things, uh, dancing, dancing to the songs on the film, if there are songs or all kinds of other uh, uh, 15 seconds uh, blurbs of the film. And you'll be shocked of how many people watch it and some of them will comment. And uh, these comments could be very uh, useful for you later on to see what people think of the film. So I really, I would, I really uh, say that um, Tic Tac is great and also Snapchat. Uh, personally, I don't understand Snapchat that well and most people don't, but for some strange reason, it's also one of the fastest growing sites in the United States and they have all kinds of things they offer. So it's cheap. Tic Tac gives you $300 credit as a new customer. So right away you're starting off, okay. And Snapchat as well. And then there's a few other imitation sites like Tic Tac right now. So you can check all of them. And again, you have to think out of the box because everybody wants to advertise on Facebook and Google and all that. But those, but especially Google is expensive. These sites, Tic Tac and uh, I think it's called Triller or some other name, Trillion, which is similar to Tic Tac. And then you have real which is the one by uh, instagram uh they are fantastic places to advertise and they're cheap relatively speaking and this is probably something that's been done and dusted a million times uh, which is social sites um before anything i want to mention that uh, you don't have to uh, advertise on all the social sites i mean you don't have to put things on social sites by yourself. There's a site which I'll say, I'll show later in another slide called Buffer, B-U-F-F-E-R. And then there's another one called Hootsuit. And you can actually put one ad, one, one notice on, on, on that site, and then it will disperse it to all the places where you have your social um, advertising. So that's, that's very powerful. So you don't have to sit and worry uh, days, days and night. I'm going to check again the slide, the ch chat. Okay, I apologize again for uh, spelling mistakes. Uh, some of the stuff I prepared on the last minute and I really apologize for any spelling mistakes. It doesn't mean I'm making the rama stuff, just doing it fast. Um, so anyways, uh, so anyways, um, so you can advertise with one click on social sites. Now you can advertise on YouTube most people don't pay attention to that, but advertising on YouTube is extremely effective. Let's suppose you did a horror film and there is another horror film on YouTube that is getting huge amounts of views. You can advertise on top of that, uh, that YouTube video and people that watch that video, that video on YouTube, uh, you can actually advertise, uh, uh, you can actu actually advertise um, your film on top of it. So that's absolutely fantastic. So YouTube has some great advantages when you advertise and it's not that expensive to advertise in YouTube. You need to be very focused. So if you want to advertise a horror film, then try to have them put the, uh, the advertising in horror film sites or one particular site. When I say site, I mean to say uh, video. Uh, that is extremely powerful. Most people don't pay attention to it. Then another thing is focus your movie audience. Let's suppose you're doing a horror film site, then try to uh, do everything you can to reach those fans of horror films. There might be lots of groups on, on Facebook about horror films and you can easily put your notices in them. Uh, there might be uh, other ways. You wanna focus your, your work on the audience for your film. 
if it's horror films, then look for people that want to see horror films. That's a very, very big thing. And I cannot emphasize how critical that is because um, it could be a, extremely, extremely powerful. We, uh, in the music business, we have advertised in Facebook over 10 years ago, and we used to focus everything on the proper audience uh, of, of, the, uh, of whatever we did. As I said before, advertise on TikTok, advertise on Snapchat. LinkedIn is also, uh, I'm sorry, I think there's a mistake there, but I'm not sure. But anyways, uh, LinkedIn is also a very good place to advertise and it could be also advertised for free. Uh, you can join endless groups on, on LinkedIn and then you can just post on e each one of these uh, groups, um, whatever you wanna say for the day. Uh, one very, very nice way to advertise your film uh, for free basically is go and do a, a little, uh, go to Eventbrite and just simply open, a, you know, open a, a thing there and where it says, and you're not selling anything. You can just put in there uh, that where it says tickets, you can just say one, uh, I want to be on the mailing list. Okay, so now you have a very nice site that's made, that, which is bright site, uh, um, Eventbrite. It's a very, very nice site. And also if you put a nice photo uh, in, uh, on top of it, then you'll finally find out that when you post it on LinkedIn or even Facebook, you have a very, very nice ad together. And then you can uh, also create the shortcut to that event, right, with uh, BitLi. And then you can, um, and by the way, um, um, LinkedIn and I think Facebook, they create a shortcut to Bright, event, right? So you basically uh, have a beautiful site for free that's made by Eventbrite. And you're not even selling anything. All you're doing is you're simply um, directing people to, let's say, add, uh, Add to the mail links. Another thing could be uh, direct them to, uh, you can sell tickets uh, to uh, see it on another site. So you can do many things with uh, Eventbrite. You don't have to sell tickets to a concert there. You can just sell tickets to see the film or ask people to join you on some kind of a mailing list or different other creative things that you can do, which I'm happy to advise you on. So this is a very inexpensive way to advertise. And when you put this on LinkedIn or Facebook or other sites, it looks very, very professional. So that's a great tip. So again, uh, you should open a page on YouTube. You should have a group done there, not just a video, but anybody can open uh, a special page on YouTube for the, for the film. Same thing is with uh, Facebook, TikTok, LinkedIn, Instagram Reels, which is from Instagram and Facebook Stories. That's really very nice. People that are your friends, uh, they may see your stories. So whenever you post something which looks like a small story, uh, they'll see it. And some of these stories are absolutely fantastic. And you can actually, if you can find a way to video them, you can actually use that as promotion. I really like stories. That's, that, that attracts a huge, amount of, uh, a huge amount of attention, the stories. Now, Put your trailer on YouTube. And again, I hope you did a good trailer for YouTube. Again, it will cost you thousands of dollars if you use a specialist or it will cost you much less if you wanna use somebody from Fiverr. But uh, go ahead and put the trailer on YouTube. Uh, again, you might have to pay if you want at the end of the uh, YouTube to have them go to some link so a lot of people put the link below the YouTube, which is very effective, but it might be worthwhile for you to pay them and then there will be a, a link to go to your, wherever you wanna show the film or a blurb about the film. Uh, another thing which is not done that much, you can put a QR code uh, throughout, the film, throughout the trailer or before the trailer, after the trailer. And right now, almost all new phones have an automatic QR code. You don't have to have a program, most of them, uh, so an iPad. So all you have to do is aim your phone or your iPad at the QR code, which of course makes sure it stays in one place for uh, at least 20 seconds. So people have enough time to focus on it. And then it could be uh, direct people to your site. And again, we can supply your QR uh, code, which is extremely easy to do. Uh, of course, needless to say, ask your YouTube uh, viewers to subscribe. Uh, 
And uh, that's also very powerful because every time you put something, they all get notices, uh, whether they see it or not, I don't know, but at least they'll get notices. Uh, and, the, and the last thing is never put your complete movie for free. That is the biggest, biggest mistake you will make is put your movie for free, even though they pay you for advertising, um, unless you have an extremely successful film and you want to take a chance. Remember, once you put your film on YouTube for free, it's done. No distributor in his right mind will take your film. Okay. And also another thing is that you have to make sure that your rights are super clean with YouTube. Anybody who complains about you, um, they will um, listen to what the other side says and they have their own crazy arbitration system or no arbitration. A guy can say it's his film and they'll take it off or a company will say it's their film and they'll take it off. When you have three violations, they'll take off your whole channel, which is very, very painful. Um, so I advise you that in case you open a, a, a channel on YouTube, uh, open two of them. So if they can't, they kill one of them, you still have the other one. So, okay. So you can have two channels with two different names and try to duplicate what's on each site. So in case one of them goes down for whatever violation somebody's gonna claim, which I hope is not gonna happen, but it does happen. And they do take off uh, films, they, took a, they do take off sites. So you always have a duplicate one. So have two or three of them. Now, remember that when somebody wants to watch a film, he basically goes to uh, Hulu or, or Amazon or whatever. Uh, and then uh, you have a problem because if you're not featured, who's gonna watch your film? That's why you have to have your own site. And if you start advertising it for free or whatever you do, the PR as I suggested or many other ways which I can suggest, uh, you're gonna make the money. So if you're gonna show your film and you'll charge for let's say 495 just to see a film on your own site, again, we can help you with that. Uh, then you got $4.95 in your pocket. So it's a lot of money. Are you gonna make that kind of money on Amazon? Maybe they do have a huge distribution obviously, but you're still a little fish. And unless you got lots of noise going, uh, I don't think you'll make a lot of money on Amazon. Also, when you have a good site, it gives you prestige. And again, you can have the site done for free on, on uh, Wix or on the other sites that are free, or you can also hire somebody uh, from uh, Fiverr.com and you can do one that's uh, done with WordPress. And the advantage of doing it with WordPress is that they have templates. There's templates you can buy for about $50 and they'll install the, the, the template on your WordPress, which is free by the way, um, for $30. So for less than $100, you can have a beautiful, shiny, up-to-date uh, um, website. And, and, and then you can add payment mechanism. As I said, we can help you. With that. And um, you can have a beautiful site of your own. And if you advertise it, whatever, uh, as I said before, you can make all kinds of money. If you had 100,000 people go to your site and pay $5 a piece, which is not unthinkable, it can happen, you might gross 500,000. Uh, something else that you might make money on is not necessarily just a film. You could make money from, uh, from merchandising. You can make t-shirts, you can make hats, you can make all kinds of products. You don't even have to make anything because you can actually contract with one company that makes merchandising and they'll do everything for you. And then you'll make less money, but you have no headaches. You just graphics and they'll create t-shirts and all kinds of other products. So you could make all kinds of money for merchandising. As a matter of fact, uh, some films make 10 times their gross just in merchandising. So don't think of just selling your film. Think about um, merchandising and uh, things like that. Another thing you can make a lot of money and I did not mention it in the slides is you can do other byproducts of the film. For example, if you have an interesting script, perhaps you can convert it to a book. It's no big thing to do a book. You can actually have a book written with a ghostwriter. There's many companies that advertise it for $500. They'll do ghostwriting for you or you wanna sit and do it yourself or you wanna convert your script to, uh, to a book. And the book could be put again on many different um, uh, book sites like Amazon uh, Kindle and other places like that. And you can advertise the book. And of course, make sure that all over the book, it says about your film and where to find it. 
uh, there's nothing wrong with that. So the book could be another way to get your uh, uh, another way to get your film out there, and it, it doesn't cost anything to post a, a book on Kindle and on the, the other sites. There's at least twenty different sites where you can sell your book. Okay, so you basically what you do is you you tie in one with the other. You tie in your YouTube with your film site, your film site with the merchandising, the merchandising, uh, and I'll explain it in future seminars, the merchandising you tie in with the book, uh, the book you may tie in with uh, uh, a speech in bookstores or things like that. So there's many other chains and things you can do as a result of that. So basically you wanna do a whole situation where you are very becoming very famous and let's say if you did a documentary about a very special site, suddenly you might be invited to TV shows to discuss it. That's another way to advertise. So perhaps you did a, a documentary how to catch fish in the jungle. So whatever, I'm just joking. Uh, so if it's an interesting documentary, you might get a lot of write-ups about it and you might be invited to a live shows, be a guest in some shows and things like that. And that's endless also, which we will describe in another um, seminar. Now, a lot of a lot of distributors, there's a lot of film, um, a lot of filmmakers that get desperate and they want to find distributors. So let's suppose they go to a convention, let's say uh, the Cannes Film Festival, uh, and they just go uh, from distributor to distributor and they talk about the film. They don't realize that the uh, distributor is usually very busy at the show. It has no time for you. They'll never remember you probably unless you mesmerize them with your film. And again, it has to be with a fantastic trailer and you're competing with endless trailers that the distributor has seen that day on the Cannes Film Festival. And we'll discuss that in another seminar, how to market your film uh, on, on, uh, on a film seminar in a film convention, which we have exhibited in many of them. So I'll tell you from the other side of the coin, uh, how to get attention. So a lot of them get desperate and they find a distributor and the distributor says, you know, I have expenses. I need you to give me $30,000 uh, just market your film. So instead of him giving you money, you're going to pay him money. I think that's ridiculous. And I don't advise you to do it. Some of the distributors are really good distributors, and they were probably worth their weight in gold, and it's worth giving them the money. But I definitely don't advise you to do it. Okay. Um, if you do deal with a distributor, and by the way, we are the distributors too, ask, ask them what kind of films that is, is it distributing. As a matter of fact, if you go to a film festival, you don't have to identify yourself as soon as you see him as a filmmaker. Just tell him that you are interested in the films that uh, they have uh, for licensing and then uh, find a way to convince him, uh, whatever you can tell him, that you're interested in his films. And then he will, he will send you a salesman, let's say, uh, and he will show you different films that they uh, sell and he will tell you what are the hot sellers in many cases. And then you can decide if this guy is good for you. So if you talk to a film distributor and he's fantastic with horror films and all, that's what he does. That's the guy you want to deal with, okay? You, could, you should also ask around when, while you're in the film festival or wherever about this person, if he has a good reputation and if people know him and things like that. Uh, we'll talk about another seminar, but film conventions, especially the Cannes Film Festival are absolutely, absolutely fantastic uh, if you want to uh, uh, promote your film. I'm going to look at the chats again. Now, um, all the information I'm giving you is only a tiny fraction of information I have and I will be happy to pass that to you for free in other seminars. Uh, another thing is, another huge mistake people make is that they take a distributor and they don't realize that every distributor has a speciality. There's very few distributors who can hit all fronts. For example, there's a domestic distributor. There is a, an international distributor. There might be a digital distributor. There might be a special distributor who does airlines. And the biggest ridiculous mistake you will make is that you'll make an exclusive deal with one distributor for all rights and for all countries. There's nothing that could be more stupid than that, unless he paid you $10 million or something or some really big amounts of money. So when you do business and you're trying to distribute your films, please see what they do, see if they do the kind of distribution you need and never, ever, ever give them full international and domestic rights 
unless they pay you some really serious money, which unfortunately is, is not going to be the case. And I'm being very blunt as a businessman. Uh, just this is the fact of life. Okay. So most distributors cannot do the full job. And um, you may want to find someone who's very good with domestic distribution. But again, domestic could be theater distribution, believe it or not, especially the distributors who do just theaters. So go make a deal with him if you want to finance your own distribution for films and theaters. But don't give him exclusive to do digital because he's doing theaters, okay? Uh, then when it comes to digital, you want to find somebody, and there's not many of them, by the way, that do digital distribution. They'll distribute your film to different companies. Now, if you let's suppose you want to put your film on uh, iTunes. You will have to uh, find somebody who processes the film, and there's a list that uh, iTunes gives you, and he can process your film so you can upload it to your iTunes. But many films don't uh, uh, understand, many people, that the number of people who are authorized to actually upload the film to iTunes is very limited. So even if the guy is processing your film, he may not have an account to actually upload it on iTunes. And you're definitely not going to have an account because you're just a person, a regular film distributor. So it's extraordinarily critical that you find somebody that not only can process your films, but he can also upload them to iTunes for distribution. That's a very, very critical point. Don't make the mistake of just paying all kinds of money to process your film. Now, what does it cost to process your film for iTunes? Uh, normally, if it's, and I'm talking about prices that are not necessarily updated today, I'm talking about prices that have been around for a long time. I don't know what's the latest right to second, but normally the cost is around uh, 800 to $1,000 to process your film for iTunes. And um, then uh, if the, the guy does uh, upload of distribution, uh, upload to iTunes, he may ask for a percentage or he may ask for a special fee. Usually those guys that process for iTunes can also process for other uh, sites like uh, Amazon and other. But honestly speaking, there's no need to pay anybody to uh, upload to Amazon because you can just un uh, upload it yourself. Uh, again, you can use somebody from uh, uh, Fiverr or you can do it yourself. It's extremely easy. Um, it's all self-service. So you don't have to pay money. They sometimes they try to suck out of you another five hundred or thousand dollars to upload to Amazon, but that's not necessary. Uh, and then there's a, a lot of other um, um, sites that you can upload with the domestic distribution dis uh, distribution specialist. And again, you don't have to pay anybody. You can do it yourself. Uh, you know, if you want to take the time. If not, again, we can help you how you can do your digital distribution. Then you need to find a guy who does international. Believe it or not, the guy who does international does not necessarily do domestic. And domestic, again, is divided. And again, I can send you the information if you request. Domestic is divided into different sections. One is theaters, one is digital, uh, one is um, streaming, for example. Uh, so he knows all the big wigs at uh, Netflix and all the big wigs at uh, Hulu and all the big wigs who knows where. Um, and um, he can help you. So another critical, critical thing is divide your rights to many sections. Many times I speak to a film, uh, guy who made the film and ask him, okay, so what did you do? So he says, okay, I gave all rights uh, of my film to some uh, dude in uh, England, okay? England is a very, very good territory and also they speak English, of course. So that's a fantastic place to distribute the film. But again, he's making a, ma a major mistake because he gives them all rights, which means theater, uh, domestic uh, England, uh, uh, streaming England, TV England, again, this, you know, uh, all the different rights. And that is the biggest mistake you can make because you will lose a fortune because no distributor or most distributors cannot cover it all, 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 all uh, fronts. So either the, it will not be covered or they will be just giving your film to some other guy and then you make much less money. Remember, the most important film thing in the film business and also music business, you don't want to have too many people between you and the money. So for example, if you're going to distribute on Amazon and you gave it to a company that does processing of films and uploads them to Amazon, they even charge you a percentage, you are now removed from the money one step. I'm not trying to, find, to say anybody is a crook, but believe me, trust me, after experience of so many years, 
the more removed you are from the money, the less money you will get, if at all, because one guy in the chain may not give you the money that you deserve, and therefore you will not get your money. So try to stay as close as possible to the actual money, okay? And that's the biggest trick to make money, is to be as close as possible to the money, okay? So again, do not just give away your rights and carve them, carve them. Again, I can help you. For example, even digital, even digital uh, is, uh, is, it has many different kinds of digital. It could be national digital, international digital, airline digital, um, it could be ESVA digital, which means uh, subscription digital. It could be AVA distribution, which is uh, rights just for advertising. And that I will discuss in another seminar. So it's very critical to really slice your rights and just don't give away your rights. So if a guy is a specialist in SVOD, which means uh, um, uh, subscription, don't be stupid and give him all digital rights unless he, he does all of them. And a lot of people don't. So you're actually losing money because the moment you give somebody a limit, some rights, he may do a good job on something but not do anything on another. By the way, never be afraid to negotiate your rights. Businessmen appreciate somebody who stands on his back and he is very, very careful about his rights. I appreciate the guy who cares about this film. I don't appreciate the guy who says, I have the biggest film in the world and you're an idiot. You don't know what you're talking about. But I do appreciate a guy who's a businessman or, or producer, director, whatever, who is very polite and stands, up and stands up and says, look, I only want to give you this right. I don't want to give you another right. There's nothing wrong with that. It's okay. He's a businessman. He knows the business. If he knows the business, I respect him already. He took the time to study a little bit about the business. And he understands that he only wants to give me, let's say, s word rights or whatever. Another thing is, if you do a contract, just put the rights that you're giving the person. Don't just do a contract with all rights. Make sure that you put in there you're giving him rights for SVOD in his country. Or for example, a lot of people internationally will say, I only want to film for my site. Okay, no problem. Then put the name of his site and make sure in there that you're only giving him the rights for his site, nothing else. There's no need to give him more rights because he can go and turn around and cause you damage. damage. Okay, and also make sure that you slice the country. If you're giving somebody rights for Europe, Europe consists of many countries. It would be stupid of you. If he lives in England, just give him English rights. If he lives in Russia, just give him Russia rights. No need to give anything that they didn't pay for, okay? And you can also slice it and make, make a payment schedule. Again, we can help you with that. If you ever go to a film distributor in a film convention, they usually will say, what country you want it for? for if they, let's say if you go to Cannes Film Festival, and um, then they have a price list for each and every country and for different rights, digital, theater, whatever. The, the Most distributors are very well prepared. And when you tell them what you want, they already have a price list. There's no reason why you don't have a price list. How do you make a price list? I'll discuss in another seminar. Now, uh, international. International is a very, very big business. And most people think that America is it. That's it, only America and there's nothing else in the world. But that's not the case. Uh, actually, the percentage of uh, revenues for America is going, going down and now we are only uh, 40 to 50%. Uh, China surpasses the United States in views of big films. Uh, Europe is not as big as it was. So it could be sometimes as low as 20 or 30 of the world market, but there's like formulas. People in the business know the percentage of where people watch films. So maybe Germany is 15% of the world market, maybe. Also depends on the film because some countries they like uh, art house more, uh, you know, and some, some countries like other kinds of films. They like more violent films or they like action films. So you have to remember that the, it depends on what kind of film you have, first of all, and what country you're talking about, and so on and so forth. Um, we have our system, which is called Click Your Frick, Flicks, which I described uh, previously, and I actually did not describe it, but I'll, I'll describe it very quickly. It's a system that we take the film, we encapsulate it with protective uh, electronic, which means DRM, Digital Right Management, and when people 
when you license the films, uh, when every time somebody sees the film, we know about it and then we charge them. So let's suppose you gave your film for distribution in England, for example, and uh, 10,000 people watch the film, okay? But you're, and you're charging the person who's showing the film for each time there's a view, let's say 50 cents, okay? Now you may say a lot of money to charge 50 cents. It's not a lot of money to charge 50 cents because he may cash in $5 from advertising and showing your film. This is uh, companies that do what's called AVOD and advertising or even subscription. So every time, so let's suppose you gave your film for distribution in England and in England there's 50 million people. And let's suppose that for some freak accident, uh, hopefully 5% uh, of the people in England are watching your film. So that means 3 million English people have watched your film. You charge them 50 cents per view, bingo. You, you actually cashed one and a half million dollars. And that's our system, it's called FlixU. Um, our system flicks you, and I'm not trying to do a cheap plug here, but I'll just go over that very quickly, enables you to control the situation also because uh, you know where the film is being shown. So if you gave rights to somebody to show it only in England, uh, there's an IP, we get a report of the IP. So if, if he did not sell only in England, we will know that he did not sell only in England, he violated the deal. Alternatively, flicks you enables you to sell everywhere, if that's okay. So there's very, very big money to be made with the FlixU system. Let's suppose that you showed your film in, in India. And in, in, uh, in India, there's 1.2 billion people. All you need is 1% of Indians to watch your film. And you cannot charge 50 cents in India because it's a lot of money there. But you can just charge 5 or 10 cents of you. That's OK. Then if you got, uh, just to daydream, 12 million people uh, and you got paid 10 cents a film, hey, you got $1.2 million at least on one film. So FlixU gives you the option to make some very, very serious money. And also it takes away the piracy, although it does not take the piracy away completely, it does take away uh, the simple piracy. Anybody who really wants to pirate your film will do it. Also, in the United States, don't give exclusive to a distributor. Again, only if you get some very serious down payment. And remember, again, there's no such thing as a down payment, a large one, unless uh, he gives you a lot of money in your pocket. Whatever he wants to charge to, if, if he gives you, if he says, I'm giving you 100 grand and he's only giving you $20,000 advance, that, that's all he gave you. He's going to be have a deductible of $100,000, like insurance. So it would be stupid to give uh, exclusives in the United States. And in digital, especially, people do not expect to get uh, exclusive unless you may deal with some big company that they'll show you film for a limited amount of time. Um, so exclusives is the big no-no in this business. Uh, also remember that unfortunately, the down payment might be the only money you'll ever see from the film, okay? Unless it's a big hit. So always keep that in mind. So. If, you, if it cost you $1 million to make a film and you've got down payments of 100,000, I'm not sure you're gonna ever see a dime more. That's why exclusives are so dangerous. Um, okay, there's many other ways that you can uh, do. I'm gonna be rushing because we're already online an hour and there's so much more, so I'm gonna try to rush. how to get more subscription customers. Let's say you decided to go with our film site, which we give you for, uh, with subscription possibilities, uh, or you did other business with other sites that they have subscription. Um, you can, um, you can um, advertise it. And again, short of time, uh, we can advertise it on social sites. You can uh, advertise on uh, Facebook ads especially uh, Facebook uh, enables you to really, really hone in on your possible fan. So you can, uh, when you put the ad on Facebook, uh, try to be very, very focused on where the ads will go. If you do really smart ads, uh, a lead will cost you maybe 50 cents or a dollar. If you do stupid ads, it can cost you $20 or so, $10 or whatever. So what you should do is do a Facebook ad with a very limited budget, do a test, see if it attracted people. Uh, of course, the Facebook ads usually refers the people to your uh, Facebook page that you did for the film. 
it could also refer them to the, the film site you did and do testing, 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 testing. Don't just give a huge budget for any of this list. Always do testing, see what happens and then go on from there. This requires some time to be spent. And as I said, you should really try to get somebody who knows about social media advertising to be on your side and analyze it. It takes time. Google ads also takes time to analyze it. Uh, you can also do direct mail. And I will say in another seminar how you accumulate a list of many, many people's emails. So you can uh, uh, tell them about the film or whatever else you're doing and send them emails. I don't recommend you send them emails more than once a month or twice a month. You can also do direct texting. Uh, so uh, that's a whole project by itself because there's some laws against you just texting people. Uh, but texting is extraordinarily efficient because uh, people read text. People may not read emails, but they usually do read text. So text is a very critical item. Uh, when you send a text, you can actually have a link in there that uh, enables them to, with one click, go to the site and actually see your film. That's very, very powerful. It costs, uh, to send a text costs between two and four cents in the United States. That's not that much money because if you sent, let's say, a thousand texts, it will be $20. And if you got 10 guys to give you, uh, 10 people, not guys, uh, to give you uh, $5 a, a movie, then you made money. So remember that. So text is a, an extremely, extremely way to do things. We'll discuss it in another seminar. Okay, so uh, uh, one of the biggest problems, especially today in the film business, is that people don't give, want to give an advance. It's been already a uh, really uh, bad problem for a while that people, I'm going to look in the chats, Um, so um, it's been a problem that people don't want to give um, down payments. Uh, so uh, um, one of the solutions, and again, I'm doing a cheap plug here, is that if you use Click, Click Flix U, the site I told you, the, the system we show, they told you that you get paid for clicks, you could give your film without a down payment, not exclusive, because you know you're going to get paid. So you could distribute your film with click, uh, flicks you clicks or click flicks you, whichever name, we have different variations of it and you will actually get paid. In that case, you could give your film for no down payment, never exclusive, never. Then we have our other system, uh, which is uh, the white label stuff and we reduce the price to $2,000, which is down from $20,000. Oh, uh, now, what could be your advantage if you have your own site, especially if you have our site, which has thousands of films, you can change titles easily because it's your site. So you can do what you want. You can appeal to a specific group. You can only show on the site that we give you or if you got from anybody else, you can appeal to one group. So you can decide just to have horror films on your site, which you can do with one click with our system. And then you put your films on top of it. So when they go to the site, the first films will be yours and the rest of the films will be also horror films. So there's a much bigger chance that the person will subscribe to that site. Okay, I'm not gonna go back to what we offer, but I already explained to people, to you, what we offer. Now, a lot of people uh, in general uh, say, uh, I'm going to do uh, spend money on real estate. There's a lot of bombardments right now of different uh, real estate gurus to tell you, pay us $1,000, $5,000, and we will show you how to make millions in real estate. Well, it's all BS, because how can you really buy and sell real estate <clears throat> without spending huge amounts of time and efforts and things like that? So I'm just discussing Right now, uh, if you want to spend money for advertising, we offer you a, a website for very low cost, which is far better than uh, real estate. Again, I don't want to plug our stuff too much. Um, there was a site, there was a convention called ottexec.com. You can copy the name. And it was a fantastic 
convention because there was two days of speeches by uh, over 140 people all telling us about their success in the business. And it was really uplifting to hear that people are making money still in this business. Uh, now you might say uh, there is a problem here because I thought that streaming has doubled in the last 10 months while we have the epidemic. So you might say, uh, I don't understand it. Why isn't the business like really, really successful now? We should be making fortunes. But you need to understand that you have a problem, the, that the virus has basically bleeded most of the smaller companies to death. So they, a lot of them will go out of business and definitely they cannot pay you in advance, et cetera. Uh, the problem is that first of all, there's no productions. So there's no new films. There's some productions, but obviously uh, most of it is not happening. Um, the other problem is that theaters are closed and theaters used to be 50, 60% of all the revenues in the business. So suddenly there's no, uh, there's no business. So if you're a distributor and you specialize in uh, theaters in Greece, you're out of business. You have no money now. You cannot buy films. So on, on the surface, there should be huge prosperity right now in this business. Uh, but in, in money wise, there is no prosperity. And, and that's why it's very, very difficult to get an advance today because the, all these companies just don't have money. I, I really don't know how they survive. They have expenses. And meanwhile, 10 months, there's nothing coming in. Uh, and it's not that easy to get loans and stuff when you're in the movie business, by the way, because it's a crazy business, you know, so it's not exactly easy to get money in there. In any event, out, uh, this site had three days of, um, speeches uh, where I learned a lot of nice, interesting things, uh, see a lot of successful people. And you can also go there and unfortunately they charge $200 to see replays of 25 different classes. Uh, for any reason you were watching it anyways, it's free. So here's a very important page, uh, which is, um, I'm gonna look in the chats again. I was asked on, on the chat, what is the most lucrative uh, uh, film uh, type? Uh, I would say that the easiest to sell is, um, is uh, horror films. For whatever crazy reason, people like horror films. Uh, uh, horror films are watched uh, mostly by women, uh, surprisingly. A lot of women like horror films, more than men, funny enough. Uh, whatever, for whatever reason, I don't want to go into it right now. And Horror films is a good engineer because it's cheap to make. All you need is a, like we say, is a joke. All you need is a kitchen knife and a kitchen and you, you did a, for, uh, a horror film. Uh, and of course, fake blood, you don't want to kill anybody. Uh, so that's a good kind of film to do. Uh, uh, comedies are a tough sale, so it's difficult to sell them. Action is always good. Uh, and so on. When, when you, if you're sitting today and you're planning a film, you should really study what's going on. Don't just make a film. If you're just thinking, I want to do a film, but I don't know what to do, work on it. Do a scientific study. You have the internet. You can learn anything you want. There's a site called Statista, which has statistics about anything you can dream of. Uh, and you can see statistics of what's going on. So, Remember, we live in a digital age and that's good and bad. It's bad because you have huge competition. Everybody can now advertise their films. It's, it's good because you can study in advance before you even start doing anything, what's going on. You may find out that um, any films about the Amazons and Brazil is very, could be very hot for you for whatever reason. All you have to do is just sit and, and instead of watching films on Netflix, start looking on the internet and study um, what could be a good uh, target for you. It's all digital. It, it really is fantastic. You can also go on YouTube and you can see what kind of films people, uh, trailers people like to watch. Maybe there's a list of all the top trailers. So you will see right away what is the top films are going today. Now, don't be impressed because some film somebody invested a hundred million dollars in a film and suddenly they have a lot of views, that means nothing because they obviously have huge budget for advertising. So more people watch it. So as a result, you should study what is the going things and don't look at the biggest films because the biggest films are well-financed and also advertising. 
look at medium-sized films, maybe five to $20 million films, and study what's going on, what's happening. And this varies all the, all the time. At some point, it's going to be uh, one kind of film, and in, in two months, it's going to be another kind of film. I'm sure any films that talk, talk about viruses today are very hot, OK? So, and of course, don't do a film about viruses because let's hope there won't be viruses soon, okay? So you have to think of now and what's gonna happen in one year from now? Where are we going to be? Where, the, where, where do you think the world is going to? Maybe if we have another president, maybe there'll be some changes. So if you wanna sit down and kind of study the future, study what might be popular in the future, do it scientifically and we can help you with everything, uh, you're gonna be successful because you will use digital to slice and reach the proper customers. Incidentally, one other very important tip is that on any video on YouTube, you can find out uh, one way or the other uh, who are the main people to watch it. And maybe you can even find out uh, what, what is their age, especially if you post your own trailer. Let's suppose you posted your own trailer and we'll talk about another seminar. Uh, there's huge amounts of information uh, who is um, uh, watching it, the age, the city, all, the hours maybe, all kinds of information YouTube gives you for free, especially if it's your own uh, trailer. You take it, you, you check it out, and then you will know exactly where to advertise. If you find out um, that one, we had once a, a film that for some bizarre reason was watched mostly in Los Angeles, even though we never advertised in LA, but on YouTube, it was mostly people from LA that liked it and it gave us the age range, okay? And some other information. You can take all this information and then when you advertise in, on Facebook or maybe Google, you will advertise only to that face group. You can also advertise maybe just to people in LA. You have the world in front of you with digital, You have, to, but you have to be scientific. Don't go from your stomach. Don't decide that because you like a film, everybody likes it. It's the same thing like in the music business. Don't decide that if you like a song, everybody's gonna like it. I actually was successful mainly in songs I didn't like. Why? Because I was biased. If I liked the song, I would go and spend money on advertising it. It may not be a good deal. It might be that that's not the good song. So always do a study um, who's watching your trailer, who is your crowd, what they're doing. And based on that, you can go on to advertising. All this I'll explain in another seminar. But this is how you can get some very, very good returns. Because if you are able to, let's say, advertise on Facebook uh, to the right crowd, to the right age, maybe to the right city uh, or the right location, whatever, they, they let you slice it to different things, you're gonna reach the right people. And if you're gonna reach the right people, then whatever you spend advertising is gonna be very powerful. But if you're gonna to advertise to all the people in America, you don't care what age group, you don't care what city, you don't care nothing, uh, you probably are going to be spending lots of money for nothing because you're gonna to appeal to the wrong age group. Again, we can help you with all that. Now, this is a very important slide because we're giving some ideas about uh, financing. There's a new world that's coming out there which most people uh, don't care that much about, but the people in the know do, and that is, the blockchain and coins. Uh, everybody knows that Bitcoin, I don't know what's the latest price. Maybe it's around 20 today, I don't know. Uh, Bitcoin uh, collapsed. Uh, Bitcoin started in $1 and went up to, as I said, $18,000 or whatever the price is today. Uh, most people don't remember that uh, a year ago, um, a little bit more, Bitcoin was as low as 3,500 and everybody said that Bitcoin is finished. Uh, I told all my friends, go and buy it. It's going to reach $100,000. So coins and blockchain is the future, a lot of the future, because people like to hold their money in bitcoins or coins or digital coins. And I'll explain all that in another seminar. So uh, and there was uh, about two years ago, there was about 500 companies or 800 companies that issued coins. The coins, most of them were called utility coins, which means you, you, they, they had a website, these people, um, and then people went to the website and they bought the coins thinking the coins will appreciate. Now the coins did not give them any ownership of anything. These were just utility coins uh, because you believe that a coin that's connected with something else will go uh, higher. 
And there were some companies uh, in the movie business that launched coins. One of them, I uh, forgot the name right now, managed to accumulate no less than $600 million in selling coins. I still don't know why uh, nobody prosecuted them. Uh, I think because they're not in the United States. Uh, $600 million they raised with coins. The coins were basically BS. Uh, so this is called utility coins. And all this hoopla stopped, which sucked out of the public over $50 billion uh, two years ago, three years ago. 2017, 2018, um, because the SEC got on top of it and said, hey, hey, you guys, you did never register these coins with us. So it's not legal. Interestingly enough, it doesn't take much to actually have it, uh, register with the government. Uh, and if you register with the government and you, uh, you filed what's called a, a PPM or a plan, what you can do with the money, you're completely kosher. People can sue you but you didn't do anything illegal. Actually, you're very legal and you actually can tell people uh, about, uh, about your film and collect money. This is a whole topic that we're not gonna go into. So basically uh, right now, utility coins are not really happening much because the SEC uh, can prosecute the people that do the utility coins or they chase them or technically they can put them in jail. But one, and there's other kinds of coins, I'm not gonna go into them, but one coin that's still solid since even a few years ago is called a security coin. What is a security coin? Security coin is the closest thing to a stock. So when somebody buy, so let's suppose you had a hundred, you're selling it, just for example, a thousand coins. These coins are called security coins and each coin gives you one over 1000 uh, ownership in the film, for example. So one way to finance your film, which is not done much because most people think it's undoable or it's very complicated, but we can help you with that 100%, is you can simply decide to launch the film, uh, the financing of the film via coins. You can actually, uh, let's say, uh, sell 1 million coins in the, in the film to finance the film. And let's say, uh, le let's say um, every coin is worth, just as an example, 50 cents. So if you sold all the coins, then you got the film financed, uh, got the film financed. By the way, it doesn't mean that the coins have to be exact. So it doesn't mean if you buy a coin of $1 and there's a thousand coins that they, they got one over a thousand of, of the film. It could be that you're only selling a percentage of the film. There's no law that you have to sell the whole film against the coins. You can decide that the coins only go against some of the film. So, so that's your profit. So if you made now, why would people buy the security coins is because the coins are like shares, they can go up. So let's suppose you launched a fantastic uh, horror film and it cost you $100,000 to make it and I will call it by a freak accident, it's worth $20 million. Uh, the coins are worth a fortune now. You can make your money many times over. So that's the allure of the coins. Now you might say, what's the difference between shares and, and coins? Uh, I'll, I'll talk very quickly about in this in this particular presentation. Uh, it's much easier to move coins around because if let's say you have coins, it's kept in what's called a electronic uh, wallet, which is very easy to get uh, within seconds. You can have your own electronic wallet. Everyone should have an electronic wallet. And uh, if somebody wants to buy it from you, he pays you. And we're not going to go into all this mechanics right now, some other time. And you can sell the coins. So it's very easy to sell your ownership in the coins to somebody else. And remember, the coins are blockchain, which means they're recorded. Each coin has a father and a mother. It's not like uh, you just sell coins. You're selling coins and the coins are uh, entrenched in, up in the sky, so to speak, and they're registered. And I'm not gonna go into all this technology and now we'll talk about some other times. So uh, you could finance your film with uh, coins. And indeed, uh, two years ago, some company was formed uh, to the tune of $100 million just to do that. I don't know what happened with them. I don't hear much about them, whatever, but nobody stops you from doing it today, nothing. It's perfectly kosher, legal. And if you need help in launching the coins and doing this whole thing, uh, please talk to us. You can talk to other people, but most companies that do this, they charge astronomical amounts of money, but we don't. Uh, another way to finance your films is the UK government. Uh, um, they have all kinds of grants for movie makers and also the European countries. Uh, they have an association of all, of all the countries and, uh, and uh, uh, 
other countries in Europe, the Western countries, and uh, you can you can get a financing uh, for film. Uh, the only slight problem with that is that you have to be based in Europe, so that's not a problem. You can easily register a company in England or another country, and then you are basically a European company. Now, of course, UK is out of the European Union, but EU, but you can register a company in another country, and then you become a European country. You can get a, an office somewhere, you know, for pennies every month, and you can now ask for grants. They give lots of grants, the, Europe, the EU association. Uh, you can find them very easily if you go to the Cannes Film Festival, whenever it's going to happen, or you can just search on the internet or we can help you, and you can ask for a grant. And believe it or not, they do give huge amounts of money. I know it sounds strange, but they actually give lots of money to filmmakers because that's just what they do. Uh, so that's a very, very good way to finance a film. And the UK government on its own also gives all kinds of grants. Uh, they also give grants right now, for example, uh, while the virus is going on. They did six rounds of grants for uh, uh, entertainment industry, funny enough. We don't have anything like this in the United States. Uh, China. Uh, I was in China many, many times. And you may want to take your trailer and exhibit in China. I know it sounds absolutely lunatic what I'm saying now, but it's not. You can exhibit and get a stand. Uh, they have uh, conventions there. Now we'll talk about some other time, but uh, the best one that I found was in Shanghai. They have a convention in June, uh, very close to the Cannes Film Festival. And it's in Shanghai. It's in a very exotic place or was. A uh, really interesting place, and you can get a stand there for between a thousand to two thousand dollars. You can negotiate with them just like anything else in China, and you can have, you can show your trailer on the TV. You can bring your own TV or buy one in China for penny for a hundred dollars or whatever. And um, if anybody wants more information, I'm happy to give you. And for the total cost, including the flights, assuming you fly there right now, you cannot fly there. Uh, for about, I would say, $3,000 and less, you can have your booth in China and exhibit in China. Now, you might say, why do I want to do business with China? I will tell you that in China, they pay very, very good money for uh, as down payments. Uh, also, if you lucked out and you did get royalties, you can, make, um, um, you can make a lot of money in China, some very serious money in China. It doesn't take a day. It takes a little time. Uh, it takes basically five years to establish a presence in China, but you can also, uh, if you only have one or two films, then obviously it will take you much faster. And China is a very, very good place, in spite of all the problems with them that we have here. Uh, you can also do a joint venture with Chinese companies, which is not that difficult to do. Uh, and then you can show your film in China. What most people don't know is that you... Uh, you can only uh, bring to China, and by the way, I think now it's cut off temporarily. Uh, you can bring to China uh, films from America. There's a quota of, I think, uh, it varies, 30 films, 50 films a year. Some from, you're allowed from small companies, some only from majors. So it's a problem, because if you made a film, uh, you would have to get uh, okay from the censor, and that's a problem. <coughs> now, remember, in, in China, there's 25,000 theaters. Okay, and they open theaters every day. There is no virus story there, so people are acting as if there's no virus. They kind of, they decided that they cured the virus. So just in China alone, if you manage to uh, have your film shown in theaters, uh, you can make, talk, make astronomical amounts of money. Remember this, um, I think one and a half billion Chinese people, and they're very, a lot of them are very well off and they go to films all the time. It's a fantastic place to do business, but you have to have patience. We can help you with all that. Uh, so uh, you could do a joint venture with a Chinese company, and it doesn't mean you have to even show Chinese actors, but as long as it's filmed partially in China, which is also a very good idea because you can do uh, the filming very cheap over there. I can help you with that too. Um, you, can, uh, you will have your uh, film automatically qualified to be shown in China theaters. You don't have to have a sensor uh, allow the import of it, which is very limited right now or doesn't exist uh, right this minute. So I really uh, I suggest that you look into it because it's a fantastic way to uh, finance your films and it's a fantastic place to have distribution. And also 
another funny thing is that there are some very big distributors all over the world that don't mind to uh, license a film from China. So if you qualify as an American film that was semi-made in China and it's a Chinese company, a Chinese um, film for all practical purposes, even though it's completely American, um, you can also find distribution that way. So that's a very far out way to do things. Uh, if you ever look at uh, many films that uh, were made in the last few years, you will see in the opening credits, uh, Chinese companies that they actually financed it. And we can go over all, over all this in the future things. One last thing about contracts with China is that you should remember that it's very hard to enforce the law in China or contracts, but interestingly enough, if you have a mediation clause in it, that in case of any problems, you'll go to mediation, preferably in Hong Kong, which has a system that's more similar to England or United States, then you could force um, a judgment because uh, they do uh, in the craziest way, they're a member of the mediation society worldwide or whatever that is. And therefore, if you have a mediation and you won, you can actually force the contract in China, which is a very, very important tip I'm giving you. Anyways, this is our information. If you want to copy this down or you want to write to me uh, later on, uh, and uh, I can send you a copy of the slides. So we're available for personal consultation. Uh, a lot of it for free, by the way. And uh, I'm happy to uh, help anybody. So I'm gonna get off the sharing of the slides and I'm gonna see if I can, uh, everybody can unmute and talk to each other. So I believe that you can uh, unmute and you can talk. So if you un unmute, just touch the uh, picture, uh, your picture, your face, and then it says the word mute, just click on it and you'll be unmuted. And then I believe you can talk to other people here at the uh, uh, this get together. Alternatively, you can use chat and chat with each other freely. If you have any questions, please ask me. taking a picture of the chat. So are you guys able to, to um, I don't know how to, uh, I can disconnect the chat, the uh, unmuted all everybody together, but I don't know how to do it. I'm really sorry, it's my first time on Zoom. So if you have any questions, please ask me. Uh, somebody was asking a question, do you need two lawyers in order to uh, cover your films with, uh, with uh, different types of things, if you need a lawyer for entertainment and copyright? Um, yes, copyright is a very, very uh, specialized field. Unfortunately, copyright is very expensive. Uh, most lawyers in copyright charge probably over $1,000 an hour, so it's a pretty difficult situation. Uh, and most people in entertainment do not necessarily know copyrights very well. So obviously you'll be very well off if you had two lawyers, but here's a book uh, that would give you all the basics of legal stuff. And it's called uh, The Pocket Lawyer for Filmmakers. You can buy it, uh, I believe on Amazon, it's not that expensive. And I don't know. <laughs> And um, it's a very good book to get, and you will give you a lot of information. Uh, somebody asked me about the analytics for, um, uh, for um, uh, YouTube. Yes, if you have uh, a site, uh, um, your video there, you can use a, a thing they give you for free. It's called um, YouTube Studio. And you can find all the information about your video there. Uh, you'll find out the most amazing information. As I said, you'll find out the city, the maybe the age, I think the age for sure. Uh, lots of information about who watched your, uh, uh, who watched your uh, film. Uh, 
another guy was asking me, uh, was telling me that you can bring 41 films to China. It used to be 37. I don't know what's the latest with that. Um, I personally stopped dealing with China ever since Mr. Trump decided to have a war with them. And it was very, very difficult uh, for me to deal with them for a while. Uh, I believe the film, uh, the business in China will pick up drastically soon. Uh, maybe because uh, we might have a change of president, who knows? Um, so uh, even if right now things look a little bleak in China, whenever they will allow you to um, go and visit there, which they don't allow you now, but maybe in, in February, they'll open the doors. I highly recommend that you take a trip to China. It costs uh, about $1,000 to fly there and you can stay in a very nice hotel in the center of Beijing for $100, including meals. Uh, buffet meals. I don't know if they have buffet meals anymore, but including meals. Uh, remember that even though it's very alluring to stay in Shanghai and other cities, the action is all in Beijing. So Beijing is the toughest city. It has a terrible uh, winter and um, uh, pollution, but unfortunately all the entertainment business is in Beijing. So you have to stay there. So if you go there, um, you can contact the American embassy. They may or may not help you. I don't know. To be honest with you, they probably won't help you much. But just so you have a hold there, of course, you can contact us. We can help you with lots of contacts. So uh, I highly, highly recommend China uh, or a trip to China. A trip to China for a week will set you back less than $2,000, including the flights. And maybe the flights right now are very cheap. You can also fly to Hong Kong very cheap and then take a very cheap flight to uh, 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 Beijing. Do not, if you go around China, remember the only place where you're going to have some serious action which, with films is going to be in Beijing, and maybe a tenth of it is in Shanghai, which is a great place to visit, but not necessarily good for this business. Okay. Uh, remember that uh, if you're dealing with China, they will wine you and dine you. They'll treat you like a king. That has nothing to do with doing business with you. Um, un unlike what most people think, uh, the Chinese people in China are extremely nice, extremely kind, and they'll treat you like a king everywhere you go. And it's probably one of the most pleasant places for tourists to be in is because the locals will really, really treat you well. And of course you can buy the marinating bargains, etc. But do not be tempted to spend your time in places where there's no moving business. Yes, I will be sending a copy of the PowerPoint. And uh, I will be sending all of you, uh, hopefully I can fish this out from Zoom, uh, your emails, uh, etc. But in any event, my email, uh, I'll give you the short, the, my personal one, so it's easy to write it, is S-A-M-K-L, S-A-M-K-L, which is short for my name, Sam Kleiman, uh, S-A-M-K-L at me.com, which is, uh, iTunes, uh, Apple, so samkl at me.com. So somebody wants me to hold up the book again, no problem. Uh, there's uh, many books about uh, legal things. Uh, there's a company called Focal Press, Focal Press, F-O-C-A-L Press. And they have a lot of books about the movie business. They also have a lot of specials during film festivals um, about, uh, about the book. So you can buy a book for 20 or 30% cheaper. And if you buy a bunch of them, they'll give you some more. You can even argue with them about the price, which is what I do. And I always buy bunches of books on them. It's a very, very good um, company to uh, buy books about the film business, but make sure you have return privileges because some of the books are very boring and you may never read them. But this book about uh, the rights is a very, very good book. There's another book, I don't have it right this second with me. It's a very short form and it shows you all the legal rights. And remember, like I said in my uh, presentation, uh, the rights is extraordinarily important. Uh, not only, uh, which I mentioned, uh, who owns the film, but also because there might be a problem with the music or a problem with uh, st stealing a screen right, um, Script. See, in the music business, we only have two basic rights, which is one is uh, whoever writes the song and whoever, uh, and now there's a publisher. And, and uh, also we have an issue of uh, 
master rights. But unfortunately, in the movie business, you have many rights. You have uh, to make sure that when you made the film, uh, you had proper contracts with everybody. Uh, you know, uh, stuff like that. Uh, I can tell you that there was a movie made uh, of some very, very, very famous person. Uh, she made this, um, it's a TV series she made with 10 chapters, which was never shown on anything major. And uh, the woman that was acting with this major star, uh, she uh, she had a claim that she never had a contract because the guy who made the film was her boyfriend. So she trusted him. She never had a contract with him. So years later, I went to uh, Amazon and I told him that. I said, this guy doesn't have a contract with this uh, co-star. Well, Amazon took it off. And it's just a very big star. It might be, it might, because that particular producer would not agree to a settlement or pay uh, this star any money, which of course is stupid. So everybody lost. Amazon had to take it off and that's it. So remember that you must have proper contracts with the different people in the film. You must, uh, you, uh, must have uh, contracts uh, about the music, for example. Uh, there's a whole list of, uh, you know, uh, business of, of issues. Now, don't be discouraged. It doesn't mean it's much. Uh, all the contracts could be found on the internet. You can probably buy a whole set for pennies and just make sure that they all sign it. That's all. And if, if it needs to be notarized, if there is anything, then notarize it. But make sure that there is absolutely uh, complete legal coverage because the movie could get stuck. Now, another thing I didn't mention in the presentation is very easy to get your film off a website. So don't think you can hide and refuse to take it off. There's some very wicked ways that uh, especially bit companies know that you don't know how they can uh, force your film from being taken off everywhere. And all they do is they put some little kid with the list of the places and within a day, your film is off everywhere and you'll go crazy. So the rights for the film are extraordinarily important, okay? And if there's any legal dispute uh, about the script or whatever, you're taking a big chance that uh, it will be taken off because it's enough that anybody has a claim that looks viable and your film will be offline. And that's something most people don't talk about, but this is a very big problem. Uh, I was asked uh, if a digital um, uh, signature is legal. Um, the answer is why not? If it's a uh, DocuSign or one of those things that is certified that their signature is legal, I don't see any reason why it's not good. It's fine. By the way, if you guys want to unmute yourself, I don't think that I'm stopping you from unmuting. Uh, you can talk to each other, which is really what I wanted to do, but I just don't know how to do it. It's my first Zoom presentation. Uh, I don't know, I'm gonna look and see how can I uh, arrange for everybody to be muted automatically. You cannot unmute yourself, you say, okay. Oh uh, gosh, wish I knew how to, let me see. Okay, I'm gonna, I found a place uh, where I think I can unmute. Uh, I think that now you're unmuted. Allow participants to unmute themselves. You can unmute yourself and you can talk to each other. That's what I see. Okay. It worked. <laughs> yeah, it worked. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, do, I, I do believe very much that people talk to each other is a fantastic thing. I see some webinars where people talk to each other. Uh, I see dating seminars where people talk to each other, and it's really cool. So that's why I wanted to uh, find a way to unmute everybody, and you can ask me or ask each other or change, so to speak, business cards with each other and be friends. Uh, from my experience, this is the most amazing type of interaction, even better than physical sometimes. So you can unmute yourself, just, just click the picture, your picture, where it says mute and just unmute. 
that's all. I, I don't know how to unmute uh, automatically. That I have not been yeah. that. Milton, I, I've never met you before. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about yourself? I would like to know some of the people are on the call. Uh, yeah. Yes. PG. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Sure. Oh, okay. Yeah. My name is Milton Crane. Uh, yeah. I come from Chicago. So uh, yeah, I went to school out here in LA. I'm in Los Angeles now. And so I went to school at LA Film School. And I did acting for like four years. So I'm on IMBD. And so I created my own production company in 2018, which is called Millie Mill Productions. So I have uh, three films that are in development. And so that's what I'm doing. I'm just trying to look for funding right now. Okay. Uh -huh. See who else has their mic on here. Yeah, please unmute yourself. It's very easy. Just all you have to do is go to the bottom of the screen. And where it says mute, just mm -hmm. click on it and unmute yourself. Well, I can tell you a little bit about me anyway. Uh, I've been in the business for quite a long time. Uh, I ran a uh, international filmmakers organization for 20 years. I ran an international sales and marketing company for 11 years. And right now I'm uh, putting together an international, uh, international studio without borders or walls. And we're looking for all kinds of talent above and below the line. So do you know about my, I am as a, in the industry myself, I'm basically a producer and writer. So. Oh, okay. All right. Well, I think I sent you my information, didn't I? Did you? Milton? I think so. Uh, if I didn't, I can send it to you. You know, you can send me uh, your email or whatever like that. Or I'll, I can send I'll put my email in the chat so anybody can uh, contact me. Okay. First features, as I'm writing here, at mail.com. Okay. Can you see it now? Well, uh, yes, I can see it. There's a little yeah. thing on the end. You don't need that. That was an, That's a typo at the end. It's oh, okay. Features at mail .com. You don't need that backslash. <laughs> all right, okay. okay. I'll, I'll send you all my info. Okay, great. Uh, right, James. Sounds good. James. Yes, sir. Who is, who, oh, have I talked to you before, James? I'm trying to remember. Maybe. Maybe. Can you yes. tell us a little bit about yourself so we know a little the people that are still on the call anyway. Yeah, I started out as an actor doing workshops when I left the army, I'm 48. And then I got into acting school. So that gave me a lot of confidence because not a lot of people get into acting school. Then of course, crap happened. I left acting school, didn't graduate. Uh, went to Israel, studied the theater there, learned a lot. Um, but I'm developing as a writer. Okay. So I'm great. trying to develop as a writer in, in the old school format of book, play, script. I want to be in control of my product because I've seen a lot of people who weren't. I had a sketch comedy troupe, which was a, a live, which uh, gave me a lot of experience to keep in control of your, of your product because I've seen a lot of arguments for money and I've seen a lot of people uh, with the copyright. Uh, we, we get lazy as artists, you know, to, <laughs> to, to, to take care of, the, of the, the stuff that's important. And then we get emotionally involved. So, I, so now I'm taking care of the business part and, uh, and uh, de developing as a writer because I really find writing process is immediate. It's right there. Acting, Great. you have to be part of a group and everything. And the, the true bosses of the industry are the producers, the money makers, and the, and the writers. And uh, writing is fun. It's just, it just happened. I mean, thank God I was an actor because acting gives me a tool to be a writer. But writing is really interesting. The process okay. and everything. Yeah, that's it. Thank you, James. You and welcome. Anthony? I, I see you've uh, got your mic uh, on. Okay. Yeah. Introduce yourself. Oh, some of the people there, I mean, in this group know me, like Brian and Ann. But uh, I've been in the business for about seven and a half years, three years trying to explore it. But I currently have about 16 projects that are all in distribution, uh, theater, uh, you know, theatrical, streaming, um, you know, I have several offices. I have an office in Shanghai, Beijing. I have a London office in Melbourne and LA. Great. So I've been in the business for a while. So we do a lot of co-productions and financing.
but we're very selective of projects that we work with. Um, yeah, so, you know, we're because we're very IP focused. So we're all about the intellectual property. We're not about the story. We look first at the intellectual property and then we look at audience development. Mm -hmm. And then from there, we go to making the story. So okay. that's kind of our, our model. Great. And it has worked very well for us. And so we haven't really lost any money on all 16 projects. Great, great. Good, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna Other, I'm gonna take it back to Sam here. I kind of <laughs> I just wanted to know everybody who wanted to talk. I wanted to know what they do and what their yep. background is. So Sam, <laughs> I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, I am in the, uh, I'm originally from the music business. I do music my whole life. I have a record company with famous artists. Uh, 13 years ago, by a freak accident, I got into the movie business because one of my clients for the music business says, why don't you do films? And immediately he uh, licensed me 100 films and I found myself uh, within a short time with 4,000 films. So I distribute films. Uh, I used to go to endless shows. I exhibited in endless shows all over the world, in China, in America, whatever, uh, automatically and uh, <clears throat> just in many, many shows. And of course, I meet endless producers and people and uh, have huge knowledge about the distribution of films. Uh, what bewilders me so many times is that how many people make films and then they don't care about the distribution of the film or the marketing in the films while they may possibly make a fortune doing it. Maybe they have a good film and they could make a fortune. And this particular speech I gave today was just a preliminary speech. I think I'll do more seminars about the different topics because there's huge interest. interest. I have huge knowledge and I'm very happy to uh, give my knowledge for free to anybody. It's okay. Um, Obviously, I have a few plugs for whatever we do, but that's fine. You know, if you want to look at all my plugs, okay. If not, uh, you don't have to do business with me. I'm still happy to tell you things. And uh, I hope that we will develop it into a much bigger uh, network. Uh, I hope to do another show that will be strictly network. I found a system to um, do Zoom calls, but it gives you table. So you can all over sit with, uh, it's like breakout rooms, but it's not breakout rooms. It's little tables, which is amazing. And then you can simply sit at a table with six other people. It's limited to six people. And you can actually be like in a hall, in an electronic hall and talk to people. I think it's the most amazing networking thing there is. So I, I plan to do the next show maybe that way uh, for the networking possibilities. I think networking is extraordinarily useful. And you don't have to leave your house. We have virus problems now, whatever, whatever. Uh, so my advice is available for free. It's no problem whatsoever. I'm happy to meet anyone and talk to anybody. I mean, meet anyone electronically um, and talk to anyone and it can all develop into something much bigger. I would like to say that the electronic world has given us the possibility to network with more people than we could do before. I have met more contacts in the last 10 months than in five years. Even if I go to endless shows, I meet lots of people, but they're not, I'm not focused on the right people necessarily. So I meet lots of people, but in the electronic world, the Zoom world or other worlds like that, you're capable of meeting some fantastic people. So I see that as a very, very good way of the future. Uh, right now, for example, there's a music convention called Midem, which is online. I think today's the last day. and in that convention, I was able to find interesting companies, uh, talk to people, uh, things like that. So for some, for some strange reason, the music business, they're already doing conventions like that. I have not seen, I mean, they do have it also in the film business, but I think in the music business, it's kind of one step ahead of the game. So I think electronic networking is going to be huge and very, very uh, useful to people. So does anybody else have anything to say or should we close this uh, uh, shinding? What, what screenplay book, what screenplay uh, uh, writing teacher would you recommend? 
uh, screenwriter, excuse me, what screenwriter teacher in the in sense of me buying a book would you recommend? There's so many out there. Screenwriter teacher? I don't know yeah. anything. I'm so sorry. You heard, can I just say a name? Maybe you heard Sid Field. I'm very sorry. What no I don't problem, know. No problem. It's okay. I, 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 I don't know anything about it. I'm much more involved in marketing of films and licensing of films. I'm not so much involved in the making of films. Good, good. I need that part. It's okay. Actually, a lot of people need that part because they, in, in the schools now or, or in the workshops, they teach everything about the craft, the craft, but they don't teach a lot about the business. That's, they don't teach a lot about the business because, um, as I said before in my presentation, uh, most film, most film producers or directors, uh, unless it's a big budget film, actually don't care anything about the marketing. They just, uh, a lot of them just give the film to uh, Amazon. Uh, they may post it for free on YouTube, which is a major mistake uh, and very major. And they may also put on iTunes and they pray to God or whatever or wherever they do uh, that the film will catch on. And they actually don't even care what happens with the film, which is, I find it astounding. I don't understand it. I mean, if you went in and did any business in your life, why would you not care about uh, making sure it's successful? But um, I got to the conclusion that a lot of people make films because they enjoy it, but they don't necessarily uh, care what happens later on. They, they stuff it on somebody else, you know, on the distributor. But remember, a distributor has many films. It doesn't necessarily have time to deal with your film. He may not give it a push. He may not do anything about it. He, he's not, in most cases, unless a distributor put lots of money to, uh, as a down payment, which today is very unusual, why would they really work on your film? All he's going to do is go with the law of 2080, which means the top 20 uh, presentations, the top 20 films he has bring 80% of the money. So you might be pushed down and nobody cares. So you have to take care of yourself. You have to market it. It doesn't take that much to market it. And I gave some outlines and I'm happy to help as well. Um, and uh, then you can make a lot of money. Films is something that you can make a lot of money or lose a lot of money. That's that's the issue. Do you keep your do you keep your your copyrights if you post on the, on YouTube? Uh, if you post anything on YouTube, it's very highly recommended that you register your copyrights. It costs very little money to register your copyrights, and unknown to most people, you can register many many copyrights with one submission. So, if you had ten films, you can actually register all of them with one submission. So uh, it's really pennies, and and trust me. Especially on YouTube, if the rights are not 100% clear with paperwork, uh, somebody's going to take you off one day uh, if they feel like it. And it could be some idiot that did anything. He distributed tea at your f film. He could he could get your film off. It's, it's just amazing uh, the damages that can cause you. You might be making a living just from doing things on YouTube. Um, maybe you have your film there for free, which is a mistake, but you get a lot of views, you're making some money. Bingo, everything stops because your rights are not clear. And YouTube is very arbitrary. They just, they, if, if a big company complains against you, they'll go with the big company. They don't care what you have to say unless you have absolutely crystal clear paperwork. Uh, and then you may even have to employ a lawyer to fight them. So that's why I, I only say that only put trailers there and, and that's it with, with links to wherever your film is shown or show your film on your own website but which is very easy to do. And of course we provide that too. Uh, do not in any way, shape or form, show your film for free. I'm telling you, that's a major mistake because distributors worldwide, the first thing they do is check if it's on YouTube before they do anything. They also check if it's on um, Amazon, by the way, but Amazon. Uh, is, this reason, is this reason for, is this reason because of exclusive rights? But you said something about exclusive rights before, which I didn't catch. What I said was that um, YouTube, by the way, is not exclusive. What I said was that never, ever, ever give exclusive rights to your film to one company. That's the biggest mistake you can ever make. Okay. Because if they're lazy, they don't do the job, you're stuck with them seven years. Most contracts are for seven years. And my friend, the one I mentioned in the speech, um, who did the film for $250,000, and, and I mentioned that he did a domestic deal and international deal, all he got was 40 grand and nothing else. He never got royalty statements. 
and he never got a penny over the 40,000, but to make the film cost 250,000 and plus three years of his life, which I guess is also worth lots of money. So he got nothing. And believe it or not, uh, and it, it's astounding that most of the films that are made with less than $5 million budget uh, never recoup. They never bring back them. Because so you, get a lawyer, you get a lawyer and, 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 and in tandem, you create a contract or contracts are already created in this, in this uh, range? Well, when you make the film, there's a whole bunch of contracts that you have to have people sign. Okay. Different people involved. And you can get a whole lot of film, of contracts uh, online. You can buy a whole package for pennies. Just search for it on Google. Okay. Okay. And, and then make sure that every step of the way you sign. If you have somebody appear on the film for even five minutes, uh, whatever, you have to get clearances from them because they could stop your whole film from happening. They can even blackmail you. They can say, if you don't pass so and so, um, you know, uh, we don't allow you to show us. Now, maybe that's a major piece in the film. So you're stuck. It's like real estate. If somebody has, if you have a big lot and somebody owns a little hut in the middle of it, you're stuck with this guy. You're going to have to pay him anything to get him out of there. Okay. It's basically in the sense of real estate, it's in the same ideology, in the same, uh... Uh, thinking, real estate, in, whether it's it's physical property or intellectual property, it's treated. I don't know. Basically, intellectual property is very similar to physical property. Okay. It's the same thing. You just have to see the analogy. So, like I said before, if you have a, a big lot and somebody has a little tiny building on your lot, uh, you're stuck. Uh, I asked, sorry, I asked that because I was on a film set once and we were doing a scene. And uh, the owner of the building came up to us and said, uh, you're filming my building, let's uh, sign a contract, you're paying me or else you're not filming it. Yes, yes. Uh, I don't know the law about that. Uh, I don't know the exact law. I have a feeling that if it's in England, uh, he may not, not be right because in England, uh, whatever is outside in the open is, I'm not sure it's, I don't think Covered by copyright. I'm not, I don't think so, but here it might even, be. Even if there's no name, even if it's just a visual of a, of a brick building and a window. Well, again, I know that in England, it might be that uh, it's not covered or in Europe, but in this country, I don't know, people find excuses for anything. Uh, you know, I mean, the Hollywood sign is uh, patented, you know, I mean, so suddenly you have to pay royalties for the word Hollywood sometimes, you know, or Beverly Hills, you know, so I don't know, there's all kinds of crazy things going on. Okay. Uh, and, and by the way, you'll be astounded to know the prices people charge. Like I was looking for a parking lot to do a, a drive-by comedy concert for a friend. I was shocked. I made calls to many parking lots who wanted no less than $7,500 rental. Uh, for, for, how long, for how long have you seen? Three hours, not a scene. It's a oh, concert. Oh, wow. okay. and, and these parking lots were empty. Nobody uses them because the businesses were closed. It's okay. just absolutely nuts. They wanted seventy-five hundred dollars and more for use for using the parking lot. And eventually, I had to find a parking lot of a friend of mine who owns a shopping center because everywhere I went, these guys were very smart. They all wanted astronomical prices to use a parking lot for three hours. So you can see that that could be pretty expensive. The, the problem the, is you don't even have to say Hollywood. You just have to say we're making a film and they think you have a lot of money. Well, there is a way to bypass this problem. And that is that there's <coughs> at least one company, and there's more, that you can actually do all the film within the studio. So they, they have a way to combine, uh, let's say, uh, pictures of, uh, of a city, which I don't think you have to pay for that, um, uh, in your film. So then you don't even go on location. So let's say you're filming something uh, and you want to show it's in London, it will show London and may show even particular buildings in London, for example, and you don't have to go there. So this might be a whole different story, uh, whether you have to pay anything or not, because the buildings, I mean, I mean, uh, London as a city, for example, so how can they charge you for filming the city, you know? But if you bring a whole crew, then they have the excuse of saying, hey, you're filming uh, here, so you pay us, you know? And it might be false, you may not even have to pay, but that's what they do. But if you have a totally virtual, which will save you a fortune in doing the film, um, I don't think they can charge you like that. Thank you.
So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I see one uh, particular person eating now. So, I guess that uh, you're all busy with other occupations and things to do today. I wanted to say thank you very much for being on our presentation. Um, I guess I'll be able to get you emails from Zoom. So, I'll be sending you uh, notices of future webinars, and they will always, always be different than each other because there's so much stuff that we can cover. And of, and of course, uh, you're welcome to contact me anytime you want. And my email, by the way, is below my picture right now. That's my personal email. So, bye-bye. Bye, thank you. Bye.